what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effect of Sean, and today's video is brought to you by AE Juice. AE Juice's Black Friday sale is still going on and it's extended. And yes, you can get all of this content. I'm still scrolling for just 98 bucks and it's an insane amount it's one of those things that's been on my radar for forever and i never quite pulled the trigger on it because i thought i didn't really spend the time to think about how it would apply to 3d work and what i would need because i'm like all right you know maybe do i want to use these in my youtube videos yeah i probably will use some of the overlays and stuff like that in the transitions but you know i didn't really think about how it could be used in 3d and so i started they, you know, they offered and, and gave it to me and I was like, actually, this is kind of awesome. There's a lot of ways we can use this stuff in C4D, especially things like uh, all these glitch packs and light leaks and cat pixels and shapes. Like, so basically the way we're going to use a lot of this stuff is we are going to use them as gobos yeah there's just like a ton of animated gobos in here and i didn't ever think about that but basically all this stuff all these grunge things all this stuff like that like these um cool screens glitches besides the fact that you can use fires and smoke and stuff in c4d in your assets as like you know elements because i get excited talking about it because there's so many ideas and potential there's so much content here that you can do so much with but the, the main thing is is basically when i first started doing vfx and stuff it was after effects right and you do it in 3d space on everything's on like a plane and it like you kind of layer it in and for whatever reason when you go to c4d and just because you can have real fire and real smoke and vdbs and stuff you you start to think that you have to and that these aren't good enough anymore but in reality a lot of times for your render and your scene these are great like you can just throw an explosion in if it's going to be in the background of your scene and you're looking at it from a still you know a shot that's not rotating around it where you need to like parallax around it this will work great and the cool thing about this is it's going to work better than it would in after effects because you're actually going to be able to just take this put it on a plane use the the jpeg sequence of this as the emission channel and that's going to actually give you that gi from the explosion on all of your objects so it's going to blend in seamlessly without having to do any extra post work or anything like that so i start thinking like okay what else what about these like scribbles and things like yeah you can use these as gobos so i use this on like the jinx thing because it's really cool obviously it's very like arcane like but yeah there's all kinds of effects like all these cyberpunk huds and stuff i was like oh can i do like lasers and things like that so yeah, I'm going to show you really quick how to grab uh, an animated JPEG, how to take a video from these, take an animated JPEG sequence, throw it on a light and create some cool laser beam effects with it uh, inside of C4D really quickly because there we could do a ton of tutorials on this because there's so much content. Uh, but yeah, that's the main thing you want to take away. Like anything you see can be used as a plane, as an emissive channel so that it actually like affects the lighting of your scene or you can use it as a gobo like an animated gobo or just a still gobo whatever you want so be thinking about that and once you start thinking in that way so much stuff opens up like even things like with titles and things start like being like okay that actually might be pretty cool you could just project that on something or these animated sketches like that put that as like your light over your scene that's gonna look sick uh, anyway, but yeah, all kinds of cool stuff, and there's a ton. Neon glitches, very cool. You could put that on, you know, put that on a plane with, and then put like a coat on it with a dirt imperfection map, and now you have like a really dirty screen that has this cool animation on. You could put another layer of glass on top of it, so you have this cool screen look. Very cool. All right, anyway, there's, there's a ton of ideas. So let's talk about how to grab these, take them into the C4D, uh, from here and then you know that's basically it and then we'll just throw it on the light real quick all right let's take a look at the cyberpunk hud 2.0 for some cool things that might be make cool gobos so anything that's going to like have this cool animation and scrubbing might look pretty good let's rescale this there we go like that might look pretty cool in order to actually use it, all you gotta do is hit the little download button. It's gonna inject that straight into Premiere. It all works inside of Premiere or After Effects. And so once we have that in our timeline, we can just export that out as a JPEG sequence. 
and they're all customizable. You can change the colors and stuff, but obviously you can do that, um, which is really cool. You can make them black and white and gray tone values. That way inside of C40, you can just adjust them with the light preferences if you want to. But yeah, let's do just another one real quick and then we'll show you how to export these and take them into C40. So what I'll do when I want to use a gobo sometimes is I'll make it square and I'll just crop it basically and then just kind of rescale it to kind of where I want it to be. And that's really pretty much it. So when you're ready to export this, what we're going to do is we're going to hit control M or just go to export up here. And we're going to make sure we do the ins and outs. I know and you just cut it to where you want. And there we go. And uh, we can just call this like cyber light one. Well, we'll say one underscore because it's going to add numbers on the end of it. You want to make sure it's set to a JPEG format and match the source and that's really it and then we'll do that for both of them it's going to make a jpeg sequence of both you can do a png if you want but since it's on black it'll work the same so you can just do a jpeg save file size why not real quick an ad for myself uh, inside of this ad for ae juice uh patreon members i'm uploading this reese's thing that i made uh just the other day i was just talking to discord about making food and stuff and i thought oh, i could make a reese's and chest out the new boolean uh tool and it worked really well so if you want this cool reese's cup thing uh just go ahead and become a patreon member and you get access to all the stuff for just five bucks um so yeah appreciate that okay back to the tutorial all right, so inside of C4D, what we're going to do is we're going to create a guy here for scale. Then we'll create a cube. All right, we'll kind of scale that up, hit T, and we're just making a room real quick. We can hold Shift to kind of make it a little easier. And we can just take a look at our cube. It's 600. That means we need to raise it up 300 because it's always by the middle point. So now it's flat on the ground. I'm going to make sure the fillet isn't on, and I'm going to hit C to make it editable and just delete uh, our sides here so I can have like a, a light come in but we'll have the GI bounce for it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use kit bash here whoop, and I'm just going to do this cool high tech texture and this is you know obviously just for fun but yeah kit bash is on sale as well there's a link for that below save on that but the materials and stuff from that are really sick uh, cool and everything put that in there I'll delete this one that it brought in nice and the cool thing is we can go ahead and turn on the automatic displacement here because i believe kit bash has fixed its displacement stuff down here in the legacy automatic displacement turn that on okay and so you know we've got this automatic displacement and obviously we need to go into here and we have all the things looking good Everything comes in as raw now. It actually like works properly. Everything's good. And so all we need to do is adjust this. It's really low at first, but we also want to change this to negative 0.5 and 0.5. And uh, we, before we jack up the values there, we just need to add that geometry here. So we could have done that with the square and then selected the faces and deleted it, but it's just as easy to do it afterwards. So one quick tip. Uh, is if when you have something like a cube and you want to um, subdivide it, but you don't want it to smooth, you can rather than like selecting all the faces, hitting U Shift S, and doing it that way without subdividing it, you also can just throw it in a subdivision surface, so it's kind of non-destructive. Obviously, that's going to smooth that out. But if you come in here to the linear pre-subdivisions, that's the same thing. So if you crank that up. You can see we can bring that original shape back without having to add any extra geometry to our original object. So it's a non-destructive way of doing that. And uh, we can do like probably like six would be fine. I mean, maybe five is enough. Yeah. So now we have like kind of that balance between a smooth subdivision and all the geometry. So this is kind of like the same thing, but just inside the subdivision surface. A lot of people don't use that. Uh, it's a pretty cool tool to use. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get off of the garage shading and turn on the IPR just so we can see we won't have any light going on. So let's go ahead and just add a light in our scene real quick. Target tag and null and we'll pull it, just grab the light and pull it up. So it's just kind of like a ceiling light. We'll turn it down. And we just want to get our displacement working. So let's grab our displacement values here. And because we have it you know, set, we can just crank this up to like one. And it should displace. I mean, might just need to crank it up to more, like um, maybe 50. There we go. Cool. We've got that displacement working. It's working in real time. Everything's looking good. And yes, this is 2024. I'm not using 2025 just because Kit Bash doesn't work with it quite yet, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Another thing we want to do is I want to grab the metalness value here and just crank that up so it's more metallic. Maybe like 0.7. Yeah, now we're looking cool. Okay, so we got this cool 
cyberpunk room here we want to add those cool cyberpunk lights in here so we can do it a couple different ways you can throw it on an area light and make your area light um, the gobo is which will be able to cast it as like a, a shape kind of or we can put it on a spotlight which will make it kind of like it's coming from a sensor like a point kind of think of like r2d2 or something scanning out like that or like a laser from prometheus that scans the tunnels that kind of thing so let's do that um, in order to set that up we do need a redshift environment so let's go ahead and go to redshift objects redshift environment obviously way too much we're gonna go 0. 0.0001 to start maybe 0. 0.0005 there we go so we have some fog uh looks pretty good all right, so the cool thing is, how do you create like splotchy fog that moves inside of Redshift? Well, it's really easy. You can just create a new material boop, and double click that. Okay, so open that up. And what we can do is just actually delete the material out of it and grab a max on noise. Boop, there we go. And if you want, you can use a ramp as well to, you know, just to adjust a clamp a little more visually. Doesn't really, you don't really have to, but you just grab this and plug it straight into the volume. And what we'll do is we'll change the type of noise here to FBM. And for the speed, we're going to say like 0.2, and that's going to make it move. And then for the input, we'll crank up the size. This is kind of something we're going to have to do um, while we see it. But we're going to say 55555 just because. And I said way too many fives there. It's just 555. Five, five. Uh, and then we're going to low clip, pull that up just to create some black here. And we can kind of do the same thing here and bring it down. It's just kind of a more visual way of the same exact thing. All right, so we grab that and put that on our RS environment and watch. Boop. It is kind of gone away, but you can kind of still see it. So obviously we need more fog in here. So we're gonna clamp this back down like that. And we might just have it, it might just be too small. So we're gonna just increase the scatter of this so we can see it a little better. And you can see how it is kind of foggy. So we can kind of get a sense of how it's working. We can change the C to this if we want. Uh, we can change the octaves, which will give it more detail. And then on top of that, let's scale it up just a bit more. Let's say like 800. It's kind of chunkier like that. Okay. And then again, we'll clamp this back down like that and pull this down. And actually, maybe we'll pull that up. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we've got kind of this, like, we can pull up the scattering now. So we'll have like these nice pockets of fog. And as we, you know, hit play on this, you'll see our fog will actually move slowly. You can't really tell in the IPR very well, but it is slowly moving, which is nice. And you can animate it, the direction, all that stuff. So there's a cool way to create this cool moving fog in your shot. But obviously we want it to be a lot more stylized than this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my area light and I'm going to change the spread of it down. I'm going to make it like a spotlight, like boom, like that. So obviously I need to then lower the intensity down. And now you kind of get more of a sense of that, that volumetric fog. So we have this kind of cool spotlight and I want it to be a disc because I think that makes more sense. Okay, cool. So that's like the idea of, of the fog. But let's say, you know, we've got that, but we want it to be um, that not really to be the main focus. We want our cool gobos to be the main focus. So what we can do is in the details panel here, go to our volume and lower that down. So we want it to affect it a little bit, but we don't really want it to steal the show. So we're going to lower that down. All right. And what we're going to do is inside of our environment, we're going to make sure we go to the contribution and turn the GI up. So that's important. I really think the fog bouncing around really adds a lot to the um, illumination of everything. I also kind of want to jack up the illumination values on our kit bash material while we have it here. We'll go to overall emission weight. We'll say like 40, just double it. Yeah, actually 25 is really good. I like that they fixed all the values. It's fantastic. Um, cool. So let's go ahead and do our gobo now, finally. So we're going to go ahead and create a spotlight. Boom, and we'll go to target tag and null. And we'll move our target right onto the face of our guy and move our spotlight back this way, right? And up a bit. So it's kind of going to shoot right at him. But maybe we'll come off to the side here and up a bit just to kind of give it like a zoom kind of look. All right. And the main thing we need to do is we need to probably jack up the intensity of this. So we're just going to add a one here. 
Or if you don't want to do that, um, you can just increase the exposure. It's kind of the same thing somewhat. There we go. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dial down the cone angle so it's pretty sharp on them like that. Okay. Now, what we want to do next is we want to go to the texture tab here, click that, and open up our JPEG sequence that we have here. So we can do any of the ones we had. We type, we called it Cyber. All right, we'll do Cyber 2. We'll start with 0 here, and basically uh, we'll open that up. And you can see it didn't really start to like frame 12 or whatever. But what we can do here is we go down here to the animation, twirl that down, animation, and loop. And then we're going to make sure it's set to 24, which is what our frame rate is. Hit Control D, make sure your project is also set to 24. Go back to our spotlight, go back to the animation, and hit Detect Frames. And now you can see we have 300 frames of that light. So if you turn off our area light right now, we see we just have that purple light coming in. Now it's not very bright, um, but we want to uh, basically, yeah, uh, basically I want to offset it so it starts at frame like 15, so we, we have it from the get-go. There we go. And one thing I want to make sure we have is I want this to really affect the volume because we're not seeing that much, right? Like we just see the purple lights, which is cool that it's casting that like that. Uh, we are going to go in here and add a one on top of this so it's brighter. And then what we could do is in the details panel, we can come down here to the volume and actually increase that above one and we can make it like 10 or something. And now you're going to see that that's really going to cast that cool light onto that and we can adjust it so that our you know our things a little closer like that and we'll get more of like that you really start to see kind of how that fog is spread out but you get kind of that more natural zoom kind of effect and obviously we just might need to take our fog and unclamp it a little bit there we go so now we have more of that light coming in zoom and we get uh, that really nice cool like <laughs> fog look and so if you had like an animation of a silhouette of like a fan in like a grid that would be perfect for this like those vents you know they always have those in sci-fi games and places like in warframe and stuff um but yeah so now we have this cool like spotlight we can move around and it's going to cast these cool lasers through the fog and like showcase the screen like that we can increase the spread of that, obviously, if we want. Zoom. And we get this really cool kind of laser beam effect. But you can see how that combined with our other light being set to like barely affect the fog. Um, we can tell, turn our area light down to like 0.5. Yeah, because we want that one to really affect it more. So we'll also tell our spotlight to go to the details and We'll go to the global illumination and turn that up to like 10 as well. Maybe that's too high. Maybe like four. And we just want it to like bounce around that purple some more. You can see it hitting the walls and stuff a lot more. And I think it just makes it a lot more believable. All right. Then, you know, you bring in like a xenomorph instead of a human. And uh, we hit render on that. That's just from Sketchfab. If you ever see me, use, I only use free models and stuff from Sketchfab for the most part. Just Google Xeno Raven. And now you've got a cool, creepy alien scene. I don't think the textures worked right on him, but we'll see. We'll just add a coat onto him so he's like extra shiny. It should be fine. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. So what you could do really is if you want to, um, if you don't like the colors of things, when you take them into Premiere, uh, just make them grayscale. And then when you bring them into C4D, you can adjust the color in here if you want. Also, you can adjust the colors inside Premiere to whatever you want as well. But if you want like a, a template of them, there you go.